when you do this, some significant physiological changes happen inside your body. Hi everybody, it's so good to see you. Today we will talk about the physiological changes that happen when we practice Wim Hof breathing. First of all, Wim Hof breathing is an exercise that consists of two parts. First part is 30 rhythmic deep full breaths that are followed by the second part that is simply a breath hold. And the breath hold is further divided to long breath holds made on exhalation and the short breath hold that is made on deep full inhalation and the whole sequence, the whole round it's called, we repeat three, four or even five times. I will present some facts that were learned during the clinical studies made in the Netherlands in 2011-2014, made on Wim Hof himself and made on a control group. Today we will focus just on outcomes of these experiments. What happens during the first part when you take these 30 rhythmic full breaths? First of all, you inhale way too much air, way more than you actually need, and you take twice as many breaths as you normally do. Carbon dioxide level drop and with each round it's lower and lower. And that leads to a higher blood pressure and your blood becomes more alkaline. If you would test your urine after, you would see that your urine is also alkaline. We know that we are breathing way too much and this is called also hyperventilation. However, breathing more doesn't necessarily mean that we get more oxygen to our body. Well, there is some slight increase, about 2% in our oxygen saturation in blood. However, in our brain, heart and organs, there is oxygen decrease. Less blood flow in our brain means the activity of brain is is lower and that potentially leads to less thinking. Sympathetic nervous system is activated and your heart rate grows. However, with each round, peak level of heart rate is lower and lower. However, they found out probably the most important thing that happens, adrenaline levels increase and adrenaline is probably the, the biggest factor that influences the activation of our immune response. So if you want to take one thing from this video, the best you can remember is the adrenaline increases during the rhythmic breaths and if you do the breath hold after hyperventilation you get even more boost of adrenaline. So it's a combination of hyperventilation and the breath hold that does the job. So let's dive now into the second part, the breath holding part. After hyperventilation it's way easier to hold your breath than without hyperventilation. If you compare it, for example, to a breath hold in a Buteyko method, Wim Hof method is so much easier. In Buteyko, you just do the simple exhale and on an exhale, you try to hold your breath and you measure your time. It's called control pause. And by doing that, you can measure your, your health status. Doing Buteyko control pause, some people cannot hold the breath more longer than 10 seconds. Most people do it for about 20 seconds and 30 plus 30-40 is a very good result. However, it's nothing compared to Wim Hof breath hold. After hyperventilating, even if you are a beginner, you still can hold your breath easily for one minute, one and a half minutes. And if you practice a little bit, you could go over that and hold your breath for two minutes, three minutes, and if you're advanced, maybe four or even more. If you are a free diver, it's, you are superhuman. <laughs> you start your breath hold, your CO2, builds up. However, on the other hand, your oxygen levels start to decrease and each round, each following breath hold will make you starve for oxygen even more. During the third round, oxygen saturation dropped even to 50%. Quick reminder, the normal level is 95% to 100% and it can drop to 50%. So it's super, super low and it's called deep hypoxia. Hypoxia is just a term that means the oxygen saturation is very low. If you enter the state of hypoxia intermittently for a short period of time, it increases your blood flow in brain for about 20%. And it of course happens during Wim Hof breath hold. Your brain gets more fresh blood, your organs, your heart get more fresh blood. So if you enter breath hold, from the state of no thinking, no brain activity, and you suddenly get your fresh blood in your brain, this is special feeling of mental clarity. Many people do that just for this effect, for focus. The longer the breath hold, the more nitric oxide will be released and it grows exponentially. If you hold your breath longer and longer, it will just skyrocket at some point. And why is it important? NO, nitric oxide, supplies with oxygen and nutrients your body tissues. It improves blood flow and plays a role in regulating your immune system and reduces inflammation. 
So summarizing all of that, we can say Wim Hof breathing influences the reaction of our immune system and it activates our sympathetic nervous system. And if we would say that a few years ago, before the studies were made, that would be totally against the traditional medicine. Be gentle to yourself and do it lying down on the bed, on the floor. Never do this when you walk or go for jogging. Never do this in the car when you drive. For me, best way is to do it on the floor. Oh, sorry, I still forgot about one small thing. The noradrenaline levels, norepinephrine, it's different name for the same thing, stay increased a little bit after practicing breathing. They are still kind of within the normal range. However, they help a little bit with tolerating the cold. So if you want to start practicing cold exposure, it's also advice for, my, for myself because I am totally beginner with cold exposure. I practice Wim Hof breathing and then I expose myself to cold water, cold shower. Here in this video, you will see what happened when I tried to do it daily, the whole method, the breathing part and cold exposure 30 days in a row.